Thank you very much, gents. Yeah, I'd like to echo what Krepo said, a marked improvement going on there for Gambit. But we do need to dial in on that top lane matchup first, because you are the Rise Master, as we've seen here <laughs> at the top of show. And then uh, you said there were whispers of the Cho'Gat mm. maybe playing versus the Rise. Uh, what did you make of the matchup in the end? So it's one of those things that, I, as I said earlier, I was jumping between games. And, you know, a lot of the top laners in Europe have been playing it. And you see different matchups that kind of uh, do better, perhaps. And I know that when you look at a player like uh, Huni, he was saying he's played 30 games on Rise. You don't play 30 games without learning a champion's weaknesses as well. And certainly the Cho'Gath is a difficult matchup, but it, it essentially just makes it tough for Rise to actually output damage in the late game when Cho'Gath is around. And that is one of the key things that Fnatic and Gambit actually worked around really well this game. Yeah, and also um, not only knowing that you can do better in the late game, but also rain over we saw repeatedly going for that ganks until they got that rise and got it killed. So you don't take any risks because you don't want to get him going no matter what. We actually have an example of a replay to see how the uh, matchup played out in the later game and how both top laners were in the game. Yes, yeah, so this was the fight uh, around Baron that Fnatic were looking to bait. And so Huni flashes over the wall, which normally super aggressive for Huni would be great, but uh, Fnatic actually get caught up here because Kawachat has come in through the bottom side. And remember, if if Huni isn't around to silence or knock up Kabachard, Kabachard has free reign on this fight, but Fnatic managed to turn it with really good positioning from Forbidden and Reckless, utilizing the choke around this banana bush to make sure nobody can get to them. And Forbidden dives back in, gets a lot of damage down, but you could already see in that fight just how much work Kabachard was able to do when he was given room. The problem for Gambit, though, on that one was they were very far behind and Forbidden had so much damage on his ear and the positioning was great. Yeah, the Forbidden, um, Ezreal, Reckless, of course, tag team was really impressive. Talking about Reckless, Ezreal, of course, the mobile AD carry, and then Sivir, also very mobile with her ultimate, and which was a marked change for Forgiven. How did you end up seeing it in the game? Because he was very utility-based this time around, having that on the hunt, but still racking up that CS. Yeah, Forgiven played Sivir. I think that's the first like <laughs> big kind of earth-shaking moment. I mean, uh, I think uh, Quickshot and Crepo uh, tied into it very well. And the fact that, you know, all the way through Spring Split, everyone was playing Sivir. But uh, Forgiven looked fairly comfortable on Sivir. As you said, got a lot of farm. Gambit, I feel, actually played around it a lot better as well. When it came to uh, looking to take dragons early on, we saw Gambit have a, a strong dragon lead. And putting Forgiven over in a side lane to push down a turret at the same time. So Gambit actually looked a lot better when it came to playing around Forgiven than they have done in any of the previous games. Definitely agree. Uh, this was actually the longest game in the EULCS Summer so far in 43 minutes and uh, 43 seconds. And I think that's a testament to Gambit as well. We have seen that Fnatic last week also had the longest games on average here in EU. And Gambit pushed them a little further even. And there's a couple of things. You mentioned the Forgiven, the playing around it, um, the Alistar by Eddie coming out, Kosu Pepper coming out, excuse me, was quite impressive as well. And at the center of that, someone that we've been talking about a lot, Diamond. Going for that Gragas, counter jungling early, having some really nice moves to, to take Reckless down, I think it was in the beginning of the game as well. So it definitely feels that the normal draft is it's working for them if they keep to the basics. It certainly seems to be. And, you know, there was a lot of partnership in that game between Diamond and Betsy in the middle lane. And Betsy got himself back onto an assassin. That Those are the types of champions we've seen him do better on. And between the two of them, the early game pressure they applied on for Biven was good and they did manage to catch out uh, rain over a lot in the jungle but for Biven just farmed so so well overall i would say it's a marked improvement from gambit and Fnatic. yes they were a little bit slower but they look comfortable for most of the game as it was yeah one could argue for Fnatic. it's a nice practice to having games that they have to fight for harder and fighting their way back and uh, pushing away that fifth dragon all learning curves for both of them uh, we're going to take a break for uh, from this game because in just a few minutes the giants will take to the rift against sk gaming but first a look at how sk's longtime ad carry returned to the fold to fill some very big shoes <laughs> 